poem I've never heard it before, but I've heard that tune, Be Still My Soul. That's what that was from. I was, the whole time I was thinking, I know other words to the song. Why can't I not remember what they are? Oh, goodness. Be Still My Soul. That's a good song. And so is the Christian home. If you really pay attention to the words, that was, that was something else. Take your, uh, did, who still has their, uh, their, their, their copies of the verses? They'd be awesome. If you have copies of the verses, pull those out. If you don't have a copy, then we still have a few. Um, uh, uh, verses, that, there's a lot of verses that we cover. And this is so you don't have to write it down. And uh, we've been doing a study on the family. Uh, we've been doing a study on uh, the ABCs of Christian living uh, for the past well, five or six weeks, uh, we, are, we, we decided last week to, to split it up into two weeks because um, otherwise we are going to be here for a while. And I found that uh, my messages have, been, have gotten much longer since we started doing these studies, uh, at least the, the evening messages. So, uh, and we're going to do a quick uh, just kind of refresher of what we covered last week and then get into it. But before we do that, I, I had a couple of prayer requests. I wanted to mention, or a couple things I want to mention. One's a prayer request. I'll be praying for Doug and Sandra Mason. Um, uh, they uh, earlier, earlier this last week they found an issue with the uh, the ultrasound uh, on the ultrasound. The heart was pushed to one side of, of the baby. Uh, they're at, I think 25 weeks now, and uh, they, so they went down and had an MRI, and the results of the MRI showed that there's a hole in the, in the baby's diaphragm. And because there's a hole in the baby's diaphragm, the, the, the intestines have herniated up into the chest cavity, and they're pushing uh, the heart to the side. Um, so that's automatic surgery at, at birth. Um, and uh, so there, there were already some complications. Um, but uh, she went into labor last night. They're struggling. <coughs> They were able to get the uh, labor stopped this afternoon. Um, she has dilated somewhat, uh, but she's been sent to Portland uh, overnight, and uh, she's, they're on her way up down to Boston right now um, because if the baby's born, um, at 24 weeks, it's, it, if everything's healthy and, and good, it's possible. Uh, but he's going to need surgery uh, immediately uh, regardless uh, because of the, the other problems. So I'll be praying for them. They're really... They're really needing to lean upon the Lord right now. And it was good to, it's been good to see them faithful back at church the last few weeks. And uh, they, they need to trust God. As, as easy as that is for us to say for somebody that's, that just, we, they really need our prayers and our support. Um, in fact, before we go any farther, if we could, uh, Brother Rich, can you pray for them? Amen. The other, uh, the other thing I need to mention, the announcement, uh, I told the kids last week uh, that were in the kids' choir that we would uh, pick the, uh, the, talk to them about the, the parts of the different play. We didn't have time because I was doing the kids' choir and the adult choir. And, uh, so if you, if you can stay for like five minutes after service, as uh, soon as service is finished, and I, I'm going to try to make it so it's not a late night, uh, five minutes, and we'll, and there's just, there's just one to let you know what we have, and, and we'll go from there, okay? Uh, but it shouldn't take very much time. All right. <clears throat> We've been talking about the family, 
and uh, over the last few weeks, and or last, uh, well, I say last few weeks, last week and this week, I will be talking about it again. Uh, but uh, just uh, what is the, the the Christian home and the family, and uh, how uh, the family and the, the church are the, the the two institutions that God uh, that God has placed here on this earth, and and, and just how important it is, and if it's important, uh, and 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 obviously God has created it, Satan's going to try to destroy it. And if he can destroy the the home, uh, he can destroy the church. And, and, and so we, we need to make sure that we are that our, that, that our homes are are not based upon what uh, what our culture, uh, what our world says is okay, but really what the Word of God says that we're supposed to do. And and the truth is, there is so much in the Word of God about what a husband, about what a father, about what a mother, about a, what a wife, even about even the children, about how they're supposed to be and 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 teach and learn and and re- react with uh, with the other members of the family. And, and and shouldn't we go to the Word of God as Christians? Hopefully. Uh, to, to, to figure out how we are to relate to one another. As a father, how I'm to treat my wife and, and, and honor my wife and love my wife and not go by what the world says is love, but what the Bible says is love. Right? I'm, I'm, to, I'm to train up my children and not in, in the, the wisdom of this world. I mean, it's good to be able to teach your kids to, how, to, how to do the, th- the, the you know, things with their hands and, and train them up in a trade or whatever. But my goodness, it's so much better to train them up in the Word of God and the nurture and admonition of the Word of God. And, and, and so that we can do that, so that we can, uh, be, uh, so that we can have f- families that, that are solid. Because otherwise, what we're going to have is families that are falling apart. Um, and the, the, the divorce rate uh, in homes, is, in the church, is just uh, the same as outside of the church. And that shouldn't be. And the only reason that is, is because, you, well, the only reason that can be is because you have, have Christians that, that, that at some point have gotten away and they, their, their homes weren't built upon what they were supposed to be. Uh, we, we talked about the first home and back in Genesis chapter 2. You don't have to turn there. We're not going to look at all these verses. Uh, but we talked about the first home and how uh, God ordained that first home and with Adam and Eve. Uh, Genesis chapter 2, 15. 15 through 25, uh, it, it found that it was not good for Adam to be alone. He created a helpmeet uh, from the rib of Adam. Like I said, we're going to try to go over this first part quickly. Uh, and and then, he's, then he goes on to say, uh, let, the, let the man leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. And later on in Matthew, Jesus said the same thing, but then he said, what God hath put together, let no man uh, put asunder. And we talked about how, how long a marriage relationship is supposed to last. And, and uh, according to the word of God, God's desire was never for us to separate and divorce. Uh, uh, Jesus told the, the, the Pharisees that the divorce was given to them, uh, to the Jews, because of the hardness of their heart. God's desire was never for, for that. Now, the, he does give us permission in, 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 in very specific examples uh, to, to divorce, uh, and that would be an adultery. Uh, the, if there's a, a lifestyle of adultery, then, then God gives that as an option, but, but God also desires reconciliation. And, and so the divorce does, is not necessary, uh, but again, for the hardness of the hearts, for, the, for them un, being unable to forgive or to move on. Uh, Romans chapter 7, 1 through 3, we, we see that, that, that God's uh, d- desire for marriage was not to be broken until death. It, was, it wasn't t- until that death uh, that, uh, that, that they're, they're free from the law of marriage, uh, husband or wife. Hebrews 13, 4 uh, talks about two things and, and how marriage is honored and honorable. And understand that that is how God always shows it to be. We talked about the husband's duty to the wife and that he's to cleave his wife. Uh, he's to love his wife. Uh, his wife is to be the, his love for his wife is to be the same as Christ's love for the church and as, as for their own bodies. And the scripture references are all on the sheets of paper that you have in Ephesians, uh, Ephesians 5.25 uh, and Ephesians 5.28 for that. Uh, they're to provide for the wife. 1 Timothy 5.8, 1 Peter 3.7 to give honor to his wife. 1 Corinthians 7.3 to render benevolence to his wife. That means to, to give her her due and it's talking about it, intimate relationship. It's, it's that, uh, that my body is not my own and my wife's body is not hers, but we're, that God has given us to be together. And it's talking about um, sex within the confines of marriage and how that's a natural thing and a good thing. It's created by God for us. 1 Corinthians 7, 7 5 says uh, that we are not to defraud our wife, and a wife is not to defraud her husband, uh, is, is the same thing. And that's again to, to withhold uh, that intimacy in marriage. 
The husband is, we talked about the roles. Uh, the husband is to be the head of the wife. Uh, Ephesians 5.23, the husband is to be the head of the wife and, and, and of the home. And, and that doesn't mean that he's a dictator. That doesn't mean he's the ruler, that he's better, that he's smarter, that he's stronger, that he's faster in any way, shape, or form. I am not as strong as my wife. <clears throat> Actually, I think I'm, I, I'm stronger than my wife, but she's fitter than I am. And, uh, it's, but she's smarter than me. Than I, listen, it's not about uh, who's better. It's about the fact that God created a, a, a distinction between men and, men and women. It's about God created an order. Uh, just like if you went to get hired at any, any job uh, uh, in a company, uh, there's a boss. There's a, there's a CEO, and then there's a vice president. And, and uh, listen, the Bible says that God is the, or that Christ is the head of the church. And that the husband is, the man is the head of the wife, and the husband is the head of the wife. Uh, it's, it's, it's about roles. It's not about, um, it's not about uh, one being better than the other. I skipped a page somewhere along the way. We talked about husbands, or the parents' uh, duties to the, the, the children. We talked about the uh, correction of children and, and how important it is to correct and, 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 and uh, teach our children. And we're going to get into that a bit more tonight. Uh, so, and that's kind of where we stopped. We want to look at tonight, starting tonight, uh, look at Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. Let's see if I find it in here. There it is. <laughs> I was like, oh no, it's not in here. Exodus chapter 20, verse 12, if, if it's not, I think it's in your third page of uh, uh, paper. Uh, it, near the top, the second, second or third one down. It says this, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God hath, give, hath given thee. We've talked about the, the, the husband and we've talked about the wife. We, we, last week we talked about the parents and, and their duty in raising the children. We're going to get more into that tonight about uh, the instruction and we're going to talk about uh, family altar tonight. Uh, but also understand, kids, you have a role in your family. Do not think that you are not a part of your family. Because you are. In fact, the Bible gives you instruction on, on how you are to uh, treat your parents and, and, and react to your parents. Uh, it's not just your parents' law. It's God's law. So one of the, my favorite verses that my kids have learned is, as we, can, we can probably all quote it, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. And I like to remind them of that all the time. <laughs> and they, they need reminding of that all the time, but then so didn't I when I was a kid. Why? Because they're kids, and they need to learn. It's, we, we can't expect them to be perfect, um, but there is, a, there is a learning process. And it's, it's amazing when you actually take the time to teach your kids something, they will retain it. And sometimes they have to teach them over and over again, but uh, they will grow and they will retain that. But, but kids, understand your first duty is to honor your father and your mother. Uh, so uh, what does that mean? Does that mean to do whatever they say? And It means to respect them. It means to, to not backtalk. Uh, listen, I learned very quickly never to backtalk my parents uh, as a child. And, I, I, and honestly, I never really did. I was, I was the kind of meek and mild kid. Uh, though there was one time when my mom thought that I backtalked her, and that was, I'm glad I didn't, but, that, but I wouldn't do it again. It was, I was reprimanded very quickly and very soundly, and I was a teenager. And I, it was an accident. It was, it, she just misunderstood what I said. Uh, but understand, kids, you need to honor your parents. You need to honor your parents. You need to lift them up in prayer. You, you know, you can pray for your mom and dad, because we need it. Because we don't have all the answers. And we have a God who will give us the answers. But you need to be praying for us. So, uh, uh, we, we sometimes make mistakes, but that doesn't mean you don't honor us. Uh, you don't honor your mom and dad. You, you need to respect them and, and, and honor them and lift, lift them up. Proverbs 13.1 says to listen to your parents' instructions. Let's go ahead and read it. It says, a wise son heareth his father's instructions, but a scorner heareth not rebuke. Uh, you know what that means, kids? So when, when your parents teach you something, you listen. And you learn from it because if they have to tell you again and again and again what happens, it becomes not instruction because you've already learned it. It becomes 
it becomes uh, uh, chastening. Uh, the Bible talks about how God chastens his, his children. We're, we're God's children. Uh, that, that chastening isn't punishment. It's not, uh, you, you've disobeyed me or you've made me angry. It's, it, it's more uh, the, the correction. So uh, it brings us back into line with what God's word says. And as, as, as children, uh, we need to uh, uh, make sure that we listen to the instructions of our father, of our, of our parents, not just our fathers, but of our parents, so that we can uh, honor them and... and, and uh, and not and not dishonor them. Ephesians chapter six one says to obey your parents and the Lord for this is right. I believe is what it says. Uh, and and also there's a promise there in, in another in the Old Testament it says if we obey our parents we'll live a long life. Listen, I don't want my life cut short. But I was always afraid of my dad. Not that he ever would have hurt me, but I was afraid. It's it's good to have, sometimes to have a, a an honest fear. Um, in fact, I, I, I'm almost still afraid of him today. Uh, I'm bigger than he is, but I, in my mind, there's, there's that respect and there's that honor. And, and as, as children, we should always have that. As, as kids, you should have that for your parents. It's very important. This, the fi- family dynamic, uh, the father, the mother, the children, uh, uh, it all needs to work together. Listen, uh, men, if you, if you don't love your wives and you put your kids over your, over your, over your wife, let me tell you, your marriage is going to have trouble. And, your home, and if, if that happens and your marriage splits up because you've done exactly that, what have you done but harm your children? Because a husband, a kids need their parents. Uh, they'll, they'll never do any better than if you uh, lift up your wife uh, before, above them and, and honor your marriage first. Uh, that is your duty as a, as a man. Wives, the same for you. Uh, lift up your husband, keep him in prayer, honor him, uh, submit to him as the authority in your home, not because uh, he is your master, but because he's your husband. And that's the role that God has placed him in. Uh, family life. Let's take a look at Proverbs chapter 15, verse 6. In the house of the righteous is much treasure, but the revenue of the wicked is trouble. In the house of the righteous is much treasure, but in the revenues of the wicked is trouble. trouble. We all wish we had a perfect home. How many of you have the perfect home, the perfect marriage, and the perfect kids? Me either. (laughs) None of us do. But does that mean we shouldn't strive for it? What do I mean by that? Uh, listen, uh, our homes are to be a picture. Uh, husband, your, your marriage is to be a picture of Christ in the church, right? Uh, our homes are to, uh, to uh, we, uh, we, uh, our homes are not to be different than, than what we portray here. It, it is, it, it's amazing how many people will, will and, and I've been there, uh, the, the, believe me, they'll fight and argue all the way to church, and, uh, the bitter, uh, uh, and then you get to church and, I don't have my dress on, so I can't, you know, get my skirt all, all I, don't, I don't do that. But you, know, and you, you put on a front for everybody else to see. Listen, I, 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 we, we don't want to be angry and bitter here, but listen, we don't need anger and bitterness at home either. And in fact, that's just called hypocrisy, and God sees right through it. And if you come, come in to worship the Lord like that, God doesn't want, want those things. You know what he wants you to do? He wants you to take your wife by the hand, man. He wants, ladies, he wants you to take your husband by the hand. Listen, we need to pray, we need to talk before you ever come in here. I've had to apologize to my kids and before service before. Buddy, I'm sorry I snapped on you this morning. I shouldn't have done that. I, 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 I shouldn't have lost my temper. I've had to apologize to my wife. Before. Why? Because we can't come in here before, to church uh, if our homes, uh, if our relationship with our home, uh, in our home, is, 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 there's a problem. We want our homes to be a treasure, uh, a treasure to the Lord, a treasure unto ourselves. Look at Ephesians chapter 4. We have, it, we have it here. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31 and 32. I think I, it says, you only have 31 there, but I believe it's both. It says, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Be kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as for God, or for Christ, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Uh, this is one of Elijah's memory verses for Master's Club. Uh, he just finished uh, verse 30, learning verse 32. Uh, but understand the first part of the verse says, let the bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking, just put it away from you. Does that mean just away from you or away from our homes? 
We, we shouldn't be uh, losing our temper with our kids, we, uh, with, our, with our spouses. Uh, we, we shouldn't uh, allow these things into our home. Uh, what is bitterness? Oh, unforgiveness. Right? It's uh, that, that bullying up. A, 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 I heard one said that women, uh, oh, a guy said his wife didn't get hysterical during uh, arguments. She got historical. Uh, so she'd bring up all the things in his past, so that everything that he'd ever done wrong, and 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 guys don't don't laugh, or just as or just as guilty, right? Well, we hold on to those things. What is that? I never forgave it. That's bitterness, and it will well up within us, and it'll cause us a strife within our marriage. We can't have good. We can't have unity as husband and wife if we haven't forgiven one another. So we're, we're to have, uh, we're to, to cast out or get rid of bitterness or to cast out the, the wrath. Listen, it's okay. The Bible says, uh, be angry and sin not. There are times when, when, when it's okay to be upset about things. But there's a difference between being upset about something and dwelling upon it and then acting out and, and lashing out in angry ways and angry words. There was a point in time when my wife uh, told me uh, that how she had, uh, I was looking for some things that I had collected, and when I say things, I mean uh, money. It was hundreds of dollars worth of, of silver coins uh, that she spent for face value um, for a pair of jeans. I was, I was angry. <laughs> And I didn't talk for about 30 minutes because I just need to keep my mouth shut or I was going to say something I probably shouldn't say. That was the best decision I ever made. Because in the end, you know what? My marriage wasn't, was worth a whole lot more than 300 and whatever it was dollars that she, that she spent. In the end, it wasn't worth it. But I could have made it worth it. I could, I, I could have valued that above my wife and, and, and in wrath uh, destroyed, you know, argued with her and been bitter about that. I could... I'm not bringing it up because I'm bitter. We joke about it now. It's, I, I think it's funny. Uh, honestly, it, because she's always throwing stuff away. We're getting rid of it. But, but those things aren't, those things aren't uh, we're not to have those things in our home. It says that, that, that we're to cast those things out. The bitterness, wrath, uh, anger, clamor. What is clamor? Fighting. Do we have, do you have fights in your home? There's a difference between a disagreement and a fight. You can have a disagreement, and, and it's okay. I'm not saying that the wife always needs to say, yes, I, yes, sir, 100%, sir, I agree with everything you say, sir. It's okay to have a different opinion. Talk about it. Don't argue. Don't be, don't be uh, calling each other names and raising your voices. Your kids, should, your kids should never hear that. You know what your kids should hear, husbands? Your, hus your kids should hear you lifting up your wife and praising your wife and telling your wife that you love her. Wives or kids should hear, need to hear the same thing. Uh, we need to cast out evil speaking and malice. Uh, again, it's a, that, that spiteful, just trying to hurt one another with our words. And that doesn't need to be there. There's no need for passive aggressiveness. There shouldn't be any aggressiveness. Uh, we should be, uh, again, together working as a, as a unified husband and wife uh, to raise the children. And the, going back to that verse, uh, the second verse there, verse 32, it says, uh, and instead of, once you put all those things away, be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. So instead of the wrath and the anger and the bitterness and all those things, we're to be kind to one another. Uh, uh, sometimes, uh, we just need to be kind to our spouses. Kind... Kind to our kids. I found that at times I'm not very kind. And that, that's something that we, need, that, that we are to be. Uh, be kind uh, to one another. Where does that come from? Our kindness. From our love for one another. It's a product of loving one another. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fruit. Of, and, our, and love uh, for one another should be a fruit of the Spirit. Uh, it's, uh, this is, uh, we are to be kind. And not just in word and, and pretend, in, like in false pretense, but truly kind to one another. Uh, giving of yourself and giving of what you have and laying yourself down and, and, and uh, putting others first. So we're to be kind to one another, uh, uh, tender hearted, soft hearted, caring for one another. And this, this is the ideal perfect home. There's no fighting. There, 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 there's no anger. Or, uh, I wish we could have it. We, we can do the best we can with the Holy Spirit's help. 
and forgiveness, forgiving one another. Why? And the Bible says there, uh, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Listen, there is nothing that you have done, there is nothing that your, your wife can, can do uh, that can't be forgiven on this earth. There's nothing that your kids have done that cannot be forgiven on this earth. Look what you did, and God forgave you. I mean, seriously, we, if, we can't, if we can't forgive one another, the Bible says we need to be very careful. Uh, because remember, if I remember correctly, uh, in the model prayer, they were to pray, uh, forgive us as we forgive our debtors. Or to forgive one another. Look at, look at Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5 and 7, or 5 through 7. It says, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt t talk of them with, when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. What is something that should be a constant in our home? TV? I'm, not, I'm kidding, it's not. Uh, what, 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 what is uh, the one thing that should be the constant thing that's in our home? According to that, that, the word of God right there is the word of God. What's it say again? It says, uh, it, says uh, it shall be in thy heart. Speaking in your heart, the parents' heart, the, uh, the husbands or the spouses, and thou shalt teach them, your children, or, or as the hu husband, the leader of the home, your children and your wife, diligently uh, unto the children, and thou shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest, and when thou risest up. We need to have conversations with our kids about the Word of God. We need to be teaching them the, 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 the truths of the Word of God at all times. It can't just be what they get here in Sunday school. What they get here in Sunday school should only be a, a, a refresher for what they had through the week. Uh, listen, I, 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 there, there are some churches that are, that are doing away with Sunday school uh, because of the, 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 the fear of, uh, uh, of the, uh, or not the fear, but going back to the way it used to be. So Sunday school is, a, uh, is, a, is an invention uh, by a non-church person uh, about 100 years ago. Uh, back in America, uh, about 100 years ago, uh, uh, they, they found that many of the, the kids that had to work through the week because they had very poor families were getting in a lot of trouble on the weekends. So somebody started a, a Sunday school, and they taught math and writing and, and arithmetic and all these things. I'm not, with those, I'm not advocating we get rid of our Sunday schools. Don't, that's, don't, don't. I'm just trying to explain what, 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 why they're doing it. Uh, and there, there, so so this, this man, he, he had these schools, and they would teach the kids, and the kids were stopped getting in trouble. There was less breaking of the law. Well, the church brought it into the church. That, hey, that's a great idea. We can teach these kids that have never heard about Jesus, about Jesus at church. Uh, and so they, they began to do that, and that was kind of the beginning of Sunday school. But uh, there were those that preached against it, against it at the time, and, and the reason was is that because if, if we are if the church is doing it, if, if the church is bringing these kids in and teaching these kids about God and about the, 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 the Word of God and Jesus Christ and the gospel of salvation, then their parents aren't going to be doing it at home. Has that taken place? In a lot of homes, yes. I can't speak to your home. I don't live with you. I, 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 I don't sneak in to see if you do devotions with your kids. But are you teaching your kids at home? No, there is, there is a need for it because not every, not every family, uh, not every kid uh, has a parent that teaches them at home. And we, a lot of the kids that have come to our church over the years uh, don't come from Christian homes. They don't, uh, I've worked on bus ministries and, and we never saw the parents other than when we picked the kids up and dropped them off. They didn't come to church. Those kids still need the gospel. They, may not, they still need to be taught the truth. I'm not saying to get rid of our Sunday schools. What I, what I am advocating for is that our homes become, become uh, more aligned with the word of God that we're, we're teaching the Word of God in a, in a family altar style uh, and, and are going on and we're walking around as, instead of watching TV 24-7 at home, and I'm not saying everybody does that, uh, but there are people that do. Instead of letting your kids go off on their iPads, and their, uh, spend some time with your kids and talk about God and the truth of the Word of God. There's, a, there, there's this, uh, uh, this 
direction the, the, the country has been going on and the church, um, the American church has been going where we're, we're losing our kids and they get out of high school, they, they get to an age where they can make a decision for themselves and they decide not to come to church anymore. They'll get off into college and that's the last that we see of them. And maybe a few of them will come back after, after a few years. Listen, I, I, was, I was one of those kids. But I can look back to when I was growing up and, and all the kids that I knew in my Christian, Christian school and all the kids that I went to church with and all the kids that were in my youth group and all the kids that I went to, uh, all those that I went to Bible college with and I can count on one hand how many of those kids are still in church today. It's not a new phenomenon. This is an older, this is a phenomenon that's been going on for years. Why, what's the, what's the thing? Well, many of those kids just were never saved. They didn't have to walk the walk or talk the talk and dress the way they're supposed to and do those things. Sometimes it was because parents didn't teach them. And that's what really needs to take place. The parents need to be taught. In fact, or the children need to be taught. The Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go. When he is old, he will not depart from it. Now again, the children have a choice. They come to a point in time. They have a choice to make. And, and they'll make their choice. But just like myself, I, 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 am a, I, am a, I am a testimony of this. If you raise your children the way you're supposed to, they may walk away for a while, but they will come back if they're truly saved. Why? Because they're saved. And the Holy Spirit, God will chase them and bring them back. Uh, but we need, to, we need to teach our children in the, in, in, at all times. It needs to be a part of our daily life, not just what we do on Sundays. And not, not only should they hear it, but they need to see it. It can't just be what we teach them. Our best way of teaching is by example. And you can tell your kids to read their Bible every day. You can check on them and make sure they're doing it. But if they never see you read your Bible, or you never read your Bible with them, how do they know? Our best example is through te uh, the, to teach our kids is through our example. Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. We'll look at this very quickly, and then we're going to come back to it later. Joshua 24, 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I want you to see here, just briefly, that Joshua made a choice. Joshua made a choice that he was going to serve the Lord, and not just he, but his, his house was going to serve the Lord. Uh, he decided to, to raise his children, uh, in, in, in a, in, that they were going to serve God, and that he was going to raise them in the way that God had called them to. Now, one of the greatest ways in which we can affect our children is uh, through teaching them the Word of God, is establishing what, uh, whether, it's, what, whether you call it Bible time, devotion time, family altar time. You can name it a million different things, but it's a time where you sit down with your kids uh, with the Word of God uh, and have a time of prayer, uh, have, a, have a time of devotion, have, have a time of uh, even singing uh, to, 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 to teach your kids uh, uh, how important it is Especially in today's day and age, because what, what 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 is it that gets our kids' attention? Anything with a screen, whether it's a teenager or a kid, and adults too. Don't don't. It's not, I'm not just throwing all this on the kids. I, uh, we as adults need to be very careful of this. We can get so caught up and so busy in our lives that we don't take time for ourselves. But understand, God's Word says that we're supposed to take time for ourselves and then as a family. Uh, I, I, I am to instruct and to teach my kids. It's not, my, it's not, it's not really Troy's job. I, I appreciate the fact that he was, he was the one who got to, to lead Elijah to the Lord. Because uh, honestly, if it was me, I probably would have pushed Elijah off uh, just because of... I made a profession of faith when I was young, and I want to make sure that it's real. But it's not Brother, Joy, it's not Brother Troy's job to, to teach my kids or to, to, to teach them. It is, as, as it is as any Sunday school teacher, but it's not his primary job. The primary person that's supposed to be that instructor is me. It's, it's my responsibility. The responsibility rests upon the Father. Look up a few verses. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4 says this, And ye fathers... Provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. 
Now, how do you provoke your children to wrath? Inconsistency. Inconsistency. Listen, our kid, uh, as much as our kids don't want rules, uh, if they don't have rules, they want something. Uh, they want, they, they, there has to be some kind of consistency there. Uh, it's, uh, it's almost like a safety there. But listen, uh, if my rules are changing all the time, and it's because they're my rules and not the Word of God, because uh, uh, God's Word doesn't change, right? Uh, if, if, I, if they get in trouble for one thing one day and don't get in trouble the next day, and they get in trouble for the third or fourth day, I'm inconsistent. And how, what does that teach my kids? They don't ever know what to do and what's right or wrong as far as I'm concerned, and they're always getting in trouble. I think that would make them upset with me. Yeah. Inconsistency. Uh, how else? I could goad my kids. Listen, I need to be very careful. I love my kids. We joke around. We tease. And I need to be very careful and, and, and not to, to, to hurt my children in any way with my words or, or because I'm responsible for them. I'm responsible for all those things. Not to provoke them to wrath, but what are we to do? To raise them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Now, the word nurture there is talking about teaching. Uh, it's, it's talking about instructing uh, them in, in the Word of God, just like we read in there in Deuteronomy, uh, in our going down, in our, in our, uh, as, as we're in one place, pretty much all throughout the day, we're to be teaching them the Word of God and by our example and, and through, through the, thing, the, the time we spend with them. Listen, uh, we're, we're to teach them, but uh, not just there, but with admonition as well. What is admonition? That's more of the chastening part. See, uh, we need to be very careful that we don't do it the other way around. We can't, we can't uh, bring them up in the admonition and then the nurture of the Lord. You can't punish your kids for something you never taught them. We do. Oh, you did this? Well, I guess I didn't tell you about that. I can't really get in trouble for that. We're always making new rules sometimes. Uh, no, no. Teach them the word of God so that they know what it is. And it's to be chastening. Admonition doesn't mean punishment. Listen, they're not going to jail. Uh, or it's, it's chastening, it's, it's to correct their direction, not to, not to harm them or not to make them feel bad or feel guilty over what you did. Don't guilt trip your children. Teach them what the Word of God says, chasten them or redirect them when they do wrong. Uh, why? So that when they grow up, they, they walk the right path. Amen? Uh, we we want to raise them up the way that they're supposed to be. Uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 21. And I say this as a young father. I don't have all the answers. I wish I did. Uh, my kids would be a lot better off. Uh, Colossians chapter 3, 21. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. We don't want to be a discouragement to our kids. And again, uh, it is our job to, to raise up the, our kids uh, and, and, and to instruct them. First Peter 3, 7. Likewise, ye husbands dwell with them, uh, with, according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife, as unto the weaker vessel, as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. It says, dwell with them, husband, uh, the, the spouse and the children, uh, according to knowledge, and giving honor to the wife as another weaker vessel. Listen, we're, we're, we're to share with them the word of God. We're to live with them and, and live out the word of God before them. And listen, if our, uh, notice the end, there's, a, there's a, a warning at the end of that verse. Men, if, if your relationship with your wife is, is hindered because, because of, of something, uh, there, there's some problem there, uh, God's not going to answer your prayers. We want God to answer our prayers, amen? It's a, God's desire is for us to be in unity, uh, but uh, so we need to be very careful about this. So the, the responsibility for the, 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 the family devotion or family altar uh, falls on the Father. Uh, how do we establish that? Because I, I, honestly, growing up, there weren't a lot of homes that had that. And all my friends... I, I, I do remember Brother, uh, Brother Jeff Nolan. Uh, he was one of my instructors when I went to Bible college. Uh, the only guy who ever scored higher than me uh, at that college. Uh, he went, th he was, went through it before I did. And, uh, and uh, I graduated with a 99.96, and he had a 99.97 as a final grade. I was not happy. Uh, that was a three-year average, too. Uh, but ugh. anyways, every time we went to his house, they had, he had two boys, uh, Daryl and, and Joshua. Uh, they, were, they were my age. They were good friends of mine. And every time I was over there, whether it was for an activity, whether it was for a sleepover, whether it was a birthday party, there was always a point at some point during the day when, uh, when they said, hey, guys, come on. And we all sat down, and they read the Bible, and we prayed. Every time. I don't remember another home other than that one. 
And I grew up, I went to a Christian school. I, 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 I knew a lot of Christians. I didn't know a lot of homes that did that. And so, well, you know, there was, the, there was different dynamics. I'm grateful for his faithfulness. In fact, we went back to Ohio. He's still there. He's still there serving in that church. Uh, his health isn't very good. He's, it never has been good, but, but he's been faithful. And I praise God for that. Listen, our kids need to see our faithfulness. They need to see it established, uh, this, this uh, family altar established in our home. We need to find a suitable time. It's going to be different for every family. Between work schedules and church things and, and everything else, listen, it's going to be different, but you need to come up with some time. And listen, it, it, sometimes it, it, it almost like it comes and goes, where, uh, not that it should ever go, but uh, uh, where, where it goes well for a little while and then you kind of wander off and you know what, pick it up again. But find a time that works best for you and your family, that you can sit down with the Word of God and set it. Whether it's at your dinner table, at your breakfast table, uh, or before they all go to bed at night. But make sure that you set some time where you sit down with your kids and, and your, your, your family and you, and, and you have this family altar. Uh, make a commitment to the Lord to establish it and stick to it. Uh, work out a plan of Bible reading, devotional material. One of my favorite, uh, I read a book a while back and it was talking about fathers. And, and it says, it was written by, it wasn't Spurgeon, I remember who it was. It's old. Somebody who's dead and long gone. But pretty much what, it, what it, and I can't quote it directly, but it says that, it, it says that the, uh, the husband and the father is, by the time he teaches, by the time he sits down with his children to teach them, is one of the most well-read scholars. Because he had, and, and again, I'm, I'm paraphrasing it, but because he has to study and learn for himself before he can teach it to somebody else. So he spends time in the morning or whatever uh, seeking what God would have for him. And then he, he takes time to teach it to his kids. Listen, we need to make sure that we, we don't just have Bible time and that's it for the day. Man, we, we need that for ourselves first and foremost for our daily walk. But then uh, we need to then be able to take that, the word of God, and teach it to our kids. Stick to it. Work out that plan of Bible reading. Figure out what you need to do. And then do it. And if something happens and it falls off, and, and, and whether it's because of schedules, schedule changes or whatever, start it up again. It, it's not the end. Uh, every day is a new day. It's like a diet. If, I, if, I, if, I, if I'm on a diet, which I'm not at the moment, which I probably should be, uh, but if I'm on a diet and I, and, I'm, and I mess up and I have a bad meal, oh, I, I give up now. I ruined it. No, you just ate bad for a meal. Pick it up for the next, the next time around. Anybody that, uh, Frank and Robin can attest to that with, with all the weight that they've lost. They showed me a picture of, of them from years ago, and they don't look like the same people. I uh, asked my wife. And, you know, she's lost 100 pounds in the last, last year. I'm proud of her. Uh, but you just don't give up. You just, if you mess up, you just keep going. Same way with this. Uh, family altar time. It, 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 make sure that if, if you allow yourself to, uh, to, to let it slip away, then... then uh, pick it back up again the very next day. Now go back to Joshua chapter 24, 15 with me for a second. And I'm actually going to go to Joshua. We're almost done. As far as four suggestions on things you can do, uh, you go through the book of Proverbs, uh, Maybe take a song and teach it to your kids. Listen, our kids, our, our kids don't sing in church because we don't teach them to sing at home. Uh, uh, listen, we need to make sure that we, our kids know the songs that we sing. Uh, uh, teach your kids a song. Find a hymn or a chorus every month that you can work on. Prayer cards. Uh, one of the things, one of my wife's ideas has been, uh, has been uh, she's, she's talked about it, and she's not actually ever done it. Uh, but uh, it's take the missionaries that we have and write their names uh, on uh, uh, popsicle sticks and have the kids draw on a, missionary, a missionary's name uh, every time we, you know, we have Bible time. Uh, so they can pray for that, for that one. Uh, uh, pray for each other, one another. Make sure that uh, your kids' prayers aren't just, you know, this is something that we work with our kids on, is, is, is they're not just the repetitive Right? Uh, the same things every time. And, and when they're really young, it's, it's understandable. They just don't know. But we try to say, okay, you need to find some. Need, who are you going to pray for tonight? And why, why are you praying for them? And they'll always pick Mima or, or Papa or, 
or somebody that they love and care for, and they'll pay, they'll pray for Papa's back and whatever. But they're actually putting some thought into it, and but that's how we teach them to pray. And then to make sure that you're brief and consistent. It's better to be brief and consistent uh, than long, drawn out, and you only do it twice. Uh, don't don't uh, don't kill yourself by 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 starting out trying to overdo it. It's like going to the gym and, and bench pressing 300 pounds and not being able to move the next day. You never go back to the gym again. Uh, involve the entire family. Uh, no, no child is too young or uh, no adult is too old or too busy or should be. Uh, and go through a variety of different things. But, but, but it is so, so important for us to do this. And make sure that the atmosphere in your home isn't different. Right? You're getting ready to do Bible time. Don't, don't make a pretense out of becoming super spiritual all of a sudden and it just needs to be your daily life. Amen. Not just something that you're, that you're doing. Uh, again, back to Joshua chapter uh, the, uh, where did I tell you? Chapter 24. Joshua chapter 24. Go back to verse 14. It says, Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and truth. And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt. And serve ye the Lord. And Joshua's encouraging or exhorting the people of Israel to turn away from the gods of the land. To, to, to make a choice to serve God. He's, he's saying, listen, you, uh, you, can, you can stay here and you can... Uh, you, you, you can do what you want, uh, figure out what you want, but you've got to make a choice. Either serve God or serve them. Make a choice. In the end, of it, he says, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. But before you can do that, you have to put away those old things. Listen, you can't, uh, there, how many hours are there in a day? 24. Are you busy? How many of you are not busy at home? You've got nothing to do all day. You sit around. Nobody? I didn't think so. I'm not either. Right? Uh, so, so what we're talking about is adding something into your day uh, on top of everything else. You know what you're going to do? I just don't have time for that. You've got to find the time. Listen, I'm not saying that you have gods and that you're worshiping uh, Buddha or some other god in your home. But listen, uh, if, there, if, if so, there's things going on in your home that aren't unnecessary, why not remove that loose for a time, so you have enough time to carve out for time to spend with the Lord? Shut the TV off 30 minutes earlier before the kids go to bed and say, hey, let's, let's just talk about this verse I read this morning. Let's, let's pray for our church. Let's pray for our pastor. I would appreciate that. Let's, let's pray for, for, for the Masons. They're really going through a hard time. Talk to your kids about it. Listen, it, it, it was a blessing to be able to talk to Elijah and, and when, when Pastor Williams was sick down. In, uh, and and we, that we took a special time to pray for, for Pastor Williams. And then God, God worked and healed and brought him back. He said, Elijah, guess what? God answered your prayer. That's a blessing. Because we actually, he actually prayed for him. Now, if he hadn't prayed for him, if he didn't know what was going on, it wouldn't have mattered to him. I mean, it would have, because he loves Pastor Williams, but, but uh, it meant something special because he had taken that time. But we have to carve out that time, whether it's turning off the TV or, or, or at the dinner table. But you, you have to make it. And sometimes that means you have to get rid of something else. And let me tell you, I don't care how good the, the antique road show is or, or, <laughs> or whatever TV show it is that you watch, uh, I don't care how good it is, nothing's going to compare to spending time with the Lord and your family. Because in the end, uh, it doesn't matter what happened in episode 7 of season 4 of whatever show it is that you watch. It doesn't matter. What's going to matter down the road? What I taught my kids. The time I spent with my kids. And listen, uh, this time that you spend uh, during your family altar time uh, can be a wonderful time of fellowship with, with your children. And they see that what we do here at church is real. It isn't just a, a show. 
It isn't just what we do on Sunday. But we meet with the Lord every day. They need to see that. Because in the end, we want them to meet with the Lord every day. Amen? Because something's going to happen. I'm not going to be around forever. I, I'm going to die someday. We all do. Unless the, Lord come, Lord, unless the Lord comes back, I will die. And whether that's, whether that's uh, uh, in the next 10 years, which I certainly hope not, or the next 40 years, I want my kids, when I'm not around, to influence them anymore, to do what God has called them to do. As, as, as my boys are saved, praise the Lord. And, and man, I, I, I want the best for Hannah and, and Zeke. I want them to get saved. How's that going to happen if I don't teach them about the gospel? My job. Grandparents, you have, you have a role to play. You're not off the hook. Just because they're out of your house, you've got grandkids now. Now that doesn't mean you get to barge in in your kids' homes and, and you know, overtake their homes and, and, and unwelcomed. And, uh, that's not what that means, but man, your kids are watching you too. Their kids are watching you too. But your grandkids, let, 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 them, let them see that you're real. Let them see that your, your relationship with Christ is real. And whether that's, you just take them apart some time and just say, I want you to know I'm praying for you. Can we, can we pray right now? Let them see it. Jonathan Edwards, his mother, I had, goodness, it was what, nine children or something like that? One of the things that she was known for, actually I think it was Jonathan Edwards, I, I was quoting earlier. Uh, but one of the things that she was known for was praying with, with one of her children every day. And, uh, and his, one of his greatest memories of his mother was her weeping on the bed over him. Not because he'd done anything wrong, but because she had a desire to see God use him and God help him. Let your kids know. Let your grandkids know. May our homes be strong. May we have men that are willing to stand up. and raise. May we be willing to stand up and be the fathers and the husbands that we're supposed to be. Many times the, the women have to step up because the men don't. And listen, there are, there are women that are able to. Uh, there are women that are, uh, I'm not saying they don't have the ability. But man, we need to stand up. And we need to do what God needs to call us to do. And wives, if, if, if all else fails, step up. If I wasn't teaching my kids at home, I would rather my wife did than just to say he's failing. We need to stand up for what the Lord God has created as, a, as, a, as families. Because our church is based on God's people and their homes. And when our homes fall apart, our church falls apart. It'll fall apart from the inside, not from the outside. The Bible says that Jesus said the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I'm grateful for that. But we have to make a choice. And that's where he said in verse 15, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. May we all make that choice tonight. And whether you're looking forward to, looking ahead to, to a home that you'll one day have or, or with, with a family you'll one day have that you don't have. Or maybe you look at the family you have now and you see some changes you need to make. Or maybe you're looking back and thinking, man, I wish I'd done something different with the family that I used, used to have. You can't change the past. But you can change from here forward and change the effect that you have on those around you in your homes. Father God, I thank you for this day. Lord, I thank you for the, the truth of your word. Lord God, I thank you for, for the homes that we have. and uh, Lord, uh, just the, the men that we have here in our church that are willing to, to come and to serve. God, I, I pray that you just strengthen our men uh, to be the husbands and the, 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 the fathers that, that you've called us to be. Help us to teach our kids, to raise up our children in the way that they should go. Lord, help us to be prepared ourselves so that we can do that. Lord, I, I know that none of us are perfect. and We, we all fail. Uh, me just as much as anybody else. God, I ask for your forgiveness in that, and I pray that, that you would uh, uh, strengthen us to do what you've called us to do as fathers and husbands. Lord, help our, our, our ladies to, to, uh, to if needed, uh, to be the encouragement to their husbands and a testimony in their homes. Lord, uh, help them to work together with their husbands in raising the home and raising the kids. And, 
uh, Lord, that, that our homes and our marriages would be strong. And, uh, Lord, that we just might honor and glorify you. Lord, I pray that our kids would, would see uh, a real relationship with Christ in our, in our lives, Father. And uh, Lord, that they might be raised up to, to, to desire and long for the same thing and to have it, Father, most of all. We thank you, Lord, for loving us and caring for us. Help us if we need it. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.